नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रभाकर एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल गोइंग टू स्टडी पॉलीमरेज चेन रिएक्शन और सिंपली द पी सी आर एंड ऑल्सो द डिज़ाइनिंग ऑफ प्राइमर्स यूज टू कैरी आउट द पी सी आर पी सी आर इज ए नॉवल एंड ए रिवोल्यूशनरी टेक्निक दैट हैज़ बीन डिस्कवर्ड इन नाइनटीन एटी फाइव बाय कैरी म्यूलिस एज द नेम सजेस्ट पॉलीमरेज चेन रिएक्शन involves a series of reactions to polymerize a particular dna segment initially it was used to amplify a particular dna but today there are diverse applications of pcr as we will see later in another video just like dna replication process where dna polymerase polymerize the dna within the cell requires different components for polymerization pcr is also carried out in a similar way but in a test tube simply by mixing dna polymerase and other components in a thermal cycler so actually what happens we just add dna template which needs to be amplified a pair of single stranded primers that is a forward and a reverse primer dntps tag dna polymerase magnesium chloride for enzyme activity reaction buffer and uracil dna glycosylase which is an optional component i will discuss the role of each of these components later in the video we also have to use a positive and a negative control for the amplification a positive control is one which contains standard dna template for polymerization and a negative control is one where no dna template is added to see non specific amplification of contaminating dna if any present after preparing the reaction mixture in a tube it is mixed by vortexing and flash spin for few seconds to settle down the content the settled content in the tube is then placed in a thermal cycler where temperature cycles at different ranges that's why the name thermal cycler is initially the tube content is heated at 94 degrees celsius for 5 minutes and after that it undergoes three phases of temperature change in a cyclic manner first phase is at 94 degrees celsius for 1 minute to denature the template dna please note that primers are already in single stranded form so only template is getting denatured in this first phase second phase is at 55 degrees celsius for 1 minute where primer anneal to its target sequence in the template dna third phase is at 74 degrees celsius for 2 minute for the extension of primer or polymerization by tag dna polymerase these steps are repeated multiple times mostly 30 times to finally yield the polymerized dna we can use the formula to calculate the yield of pcr using 2 raised to power n where n is the number of pcr cycles so from one dna molecule after 30 cycles of pcr we will get an approximate 1 billion copies of our target dna this is the power of pcr amplification and finally after amplification we check the amplified product using agarose gel electrophoresis this is the schematic diagram showing what happens during pcr as we can see during the first phase of pcr when temperature is increased to 94 degrees celsius our template dna is denatured allowing primers to bind to it during the second phase when temperature is lowered to 55 degrees celsius primers bind to their specific sequences within the target dna and in the third phase temperature is again increased to 74 degrees celsius so that tag dna polymerase can extend the 3 prime end of primer and synthesize the two new dna molecules now the important point is that we can see temperature of first phase and the third phase is constant whereas the temperature in the second phase is showing a range of temperature because at first phase of 94 degrees celsius 
DNA get denatured and at the third phase of 74 degree Celsius, tag DNA polymerase is active to polymerize the DNA. The temperature of second phase is used to anneal the primer to the target DNA. Therefore, it is showing a range of temperature. This temperature is called the annealing temperature and is depend on the primer composition. And choosing this annealing temperature is one of the most important aspect of primer designing that we will going to see in the later part of the video. This is the agarose gel electrophoresis of PCR amplified products. In the lane 1, different molecular weight markers are loaded to determine the size of amplified products. Lane 2 to 5 shows the amplified product after PCR, while in lane 6 a positive control was loaded and in case of lane 7 a negative control was loaded having no template. That's why no amplification was seen in this lane. Coming to the most important part of PCR that is primer designing. Correct primer designing is very important for the successful amplification of the desired target sequence. When designing the primers, following points should be considered. First is the primer length. Primer length should be around 18 to 24 nucleotide long, as the shorter primer will not bind tightly to the template and also the shorter primer have tendency to anneal to non-specific position. Whereas a longer primer will take too much of time to anneal and also to denature. Second is the amplicon length. PCR is useful for the amplification of short DNA fragments, maximum up to 500 nucleotide. Therefore, the amplicon length should be limited to 500 base pair. If we require larger segments, then we have to use the cloning instead of PCR. Third is the GC content. Primer should have a GC content of around 50 to 60 percent as this range provides firm annealing to the target DNA and at the same time can be easily removed during the denaturation phase. Next is the melting temperature or TM. Melting temperature is the temperature at which 50 percent of the DNA is in denatured form and melting temperature is depend upon the GC content. Higher the GC content, higher the TM. As we know that there are three hydrogen bonds present between the G and C. So if the GC content is between 50 to 60 percent, then the TM generally comes within the 50 to 65 degrees Celsius. Determination of this TM is very very crucial because the annealing temperature can be calculated only by TM. And we already know the importance of annealing temperature in the PCR amplification. Next is the annealing temperature. The annealing temperature of primer should be kept 5 degree below their TM because we know that at TM 50% of the primers are in denatured form and at 5 degree below the TM most of the primers are not in denatured form but have annealed to the template so that polymerization can occur. Next is the GC at 3 prime end. 3 prime end of the primer should contain at least 2 GC for rigid binding to the template DNA. Next is the primer dimer. Forward and the reverse primer should not be complementary to each other. Otherwise, they will anneal to each other and forms a primer dimer type structure. And ultimately, the target will not be amplified. Few other important factors to be considered are avoiding the repetition of single nucleotide more than three times consecutively and also the target should not contain any single nucleotide polymorphism or SNP or any sequences that are bound to form a secondary structure. Otherwise, primer will not bind to that part of the target DNA. Lastly, primer should be specific to their target and must not bind a similar sequence. Therefore, prior to use, primer sequence query should be searched within the database to identify any potential similar sequences if present anywhere in the target DNA other than our target gene. Coming to the function of each reagents, 
used in the PCR. First is the template. Obviously, template provides the sequences that are to be amplified. Second is the forward primer. This forward primer provides three prime end for the tag DNA polymerase to synthesize the antisense DNA strand. Whereas reverse primer provides three prime OH for DNA polymerase to extend the sense strand. Next is the DNTPs. In PCR, we want to make DNA. So we will use the deoxy NTP, but not the NTP like ATP, GTP, TTP and CTP, which are used for the RNA synthesis, but not for the DNA synthesis. So these deoxy NTPs are incorporated in the elongating primers during polymerization by tag DNA polymerase. Next is the tag polymerase. Tag polymerase is a thermostable DNA polymerase obtained from thermophilic bacteria called Thermus aquaticus. Why are we using this thermostable enzyme? Because we are increasing the temperature to 94 degrees Celsius for denaturation of template in the first phase of PCR. So a thermostable enzyme can resist this increased temperature. Next is the reaction buffer. We know the function of any buffer that is buffer resist any change in the pH as it contains equimolar concentration of acid and its conjugate base. Next is the magnesium chloride. DNA polymerase requires a divalent cation like magnesium ion for their activity. Therefore we are adding the magnesium chloride. DMSO or dimethyl sulfoxide. Sometimes DMSO is also added to prevent the reannealing of single stranded DNA that have been formed after denaturation. Last component is the uracil glycosylase. Uracil DNA glycosylase is also added sometimes to cleave the deoxy UTP if present in the polymerized DNA. As we know that DNA contains only deoxy form of adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine but not uracil.